Hey guys and welcome back to another Unreal Engine 4 tutorial. In today's video we're going to be going over how to create cheat codes. So this is quite a cool video actually, so I've come up with this concept now in which we can create cheat codes in our game so the player presses different amounts of button combinations and then something will happen. So for example, let me get in and hit play. If I press up, down, left, right, you see our health has gone up to the max. There's not really anything visual for that other than a print string, however it does work. And if I go 1, 2, 3, 4, we should be flying, sorry I mispressed that, so 1, 2, 3, 4, we're now flying, and as you can see here, our movement mode is flying. So this is what we're going to be creating today, I've just got two different examples, however it's incredibly easy to add your own cheat codes in this, and I've got two different ones so I can show you how to add different ones in there. So again, up, down, left, right, 1, 2, 3, 4, and I'll be showing you how to do these different ones today, so without further ado, let me delete this code, and I'll show you how I've done it. So the first step we want to take is we want to open up our character blueprint. So for me that's going to be content, third person BP, blueprints and third person character. And once we're in here we want to create a custom event. So I'm just going to zoom in here, find some empty space, right click and add a custom event like so and I'm going to name this one check code. So we're going to be running this every time we want to check the code the player is currently inputting. And to do that we want to add an input on here and I'm just going to name this one input, so the character the player is inputting. However, that seems to not want to work, so I guess we'll give it a different name of maybe character input, like so. Okay, so that works. I'm not sure why it wasn't working before, but there we go. So essentially we just need an input in here. For the character input we're going to put in here, and we're going to make that a string variable type. So we can compile and save that, so we have a custom event with an input of a string. Out of the character input here, we're going to come out and we're going to get an append, with that going into B, not A. Because what an append does is it's going to take the input of this and append it, so add the string at the end of the string of A. The string of A is going to be our current code. So essentially we're adding a letter onto the end of the code we already have. So up, down, left, right. We have up, down, the player then presses left, it's then up, down, left. Hope that makes sense. So we can right click A, promote to variable, and I'm going to name this one cheat code like so as this is the current code the player is messing about with and creating so I'm going to compile and save that and then after this so the return value of the append we can then just set that to the cheat code variable so we're going to be adding the character onto the current code and then setting that so if the player does it wrong it's not going to work then after this we also want to check to see if this current code is actually a valid code that we have in the system so to do that it's very simple we're going to come out of this and get a for each loop with break and as you can see that needs an array. I'm doing that because I'm going to have it set up so you can have as many different codes as you want in one array. So I'm going to hit a plus variable here naming this one cheat codes with an s at the end because this is the plural amount of codes that we can have. Again being a string changing it to an array now so kind of three by three grid up there. And then we're going to input the cheat codes array into the array of the for each loop with break there. So it's going to check to see if this cheat code is a part of this cheat codes array. And to check it, we're going to come out with the array element in the for each loop with break, get an equal equal string. The top one being the array element, the bottom one being our cheat code variable we made earlier. So it's going to check to see if this cheat code is in this cheat codes array. And to check it, we need to hold down B, left click to get a branch condition going to the equal equal and the input going to the loop body there. Off of true, so if this is a valid cheat code, what we're going to do is set cheat code there, leaving it blank, so we're just going to reset it back to default so we can then do it again next time. And out of this, we want to then execute that cheat. So to do that, I'm going to just right click over here, add a custom event, naming this execute cheat, and we'll come back to that in a second. But out of set cheat code here, we're then going to call function execute cheat like so. And again, we're going to come back to this in a minute. Out of this, we're going to loop it all the way back around into the break of the for each loop with break because we've now found a cheat code which we want to do, so we don't need to keep searching through the array. We can just stop that there like so. But out of false, so if this isn't a valid cheat code, what we're going to do is we're going to get a re triggerable delay. And it's re-triggerable because obviously if this code is the fifth one down in the array element, it's going to be false four times before it gets there. So every time it comes out as false, this delay is going to restart back at the beginning. 
So you're going to set this delay to be however long you want the player to have. So if you want to give them a one second in between each input, set the duration as 1. If you want to give them half a second so they have to press it really quickly, set it as 0.5. Set this to whatever you like, but I think 1 is a good value for me, but you can maybe even be a bit more lenient and give them 2 seconds to really do it in between each input. So again, it's not 2 seconds for the whole thing, it's however long between each input. So if they go up, down, left, right, that will still work because there was a second in between each one. And out as it completed of that, we're going to again set cheat code back to false. So if they don't do it in time, it's just going to restart and not be doing the cheat code. So we're going to compile and save that. And that is going to work perfectly for us for the player to be able to input a cheat code and have it check to see if this cheat code is in the system that we want to execute. However, we do still want to actually execute it and actually allow the player to input this. So when they do input it, it's going to work, but they don't have a way to input it yet. So that is also incredibly simple. What we can do is just underneath here, we can right click and let's say we want to do up, down, left, right. So what I'm going to do is get an up keyboard event, like so. So up keyboard event, out of pressed, I'm going to check code, the custom event we made up here. So call function check code, the character input being you for up. And that is it, very simple. And we can just do this for whichever inputs we want. So I'm going to select that, Control C, Control V for down, again for left, and again for right, and then just change them accordingly. So this one is going to be down, this one is going to be left, and this one is going to be right. And then also we want to make sure that we change the character input here. So up, U, down, D, left, L, and right, R. So now we have up, down, left, right input in here as well. So we can compile and save that. However, what we also want to do is set that to be a cheat code we can use. So if we want up, down, left, right, we need to make sure that the code and the system knows that as well. So we can select the cheat codes array here, add an array element, and just call this one up, down, left, right, or UDLR. Up, down, left, right, UDLR. As you can see here, up is U, down is D, left is L, right is R. So I hope this all makes sense for you. This is how we're kind of merging them all together and making sure that they can communicate with each other very easily. Compile and save that. What I'm also going to do is I'm going to do another one of these input strings here for 1, 2, 3, 4 as well. So I can just show you two different codes in the system. So I'm going to select all these, Control C, Control V, and then just again, changing them accordingly. So this one, I want to be one, character input of one. This is going to be two, character input of two. So again, a very repetitive process, very easy to understand and get the hang of. And finally, this one is going to be four, like so. And then again, I'm going to add that as a cheat code. So add array element, one, two, three, four. Compile and save that. Again, set these codes to be absolutely whatever you like. So it could be the whole alphabet. It could be A, B, C, D, E, F, G, et cetera, et cetera. Obviously, do whatever you like. So now let's set up actually executing this cheat code. So this is also very simple. So we're going to go back over to this execute cheat custom event we made earlier. Select it. We want to add an input. This one I'm just going to name index. And we're going to change the variable to be an integer. Compile and save that. Now if we go back to where we're calling this event, you can see we have index there. We want to set this to be the array index. Now I'm doing that so we now know which cheat code we want to actually execute. So for example, if I select the cheat codes array, you can see the zero and the one there are the array index. So let's say we want to do one, two, three, four. That's array index one. So this is gonna input array index there. This index will return one here. So we're gonna fire off the cheat code of the array index one. Hope that makes sense. That might make a little bit more sense in a minute. So what I'm gonna do now is add another variable. This one is gonna be cheats. Now you can obviously change the name of these if you like, because they are very similar. I've got cheat code, cheat codes, and cheats, but they make sense to me, so that's what I'm using. This one is again gonna be a string, and it's gonna be an array. I'm gonna get that there, so get cheats. Out of this, I'm going to get a copy, with the array index there being the index there. And now if we compile this, I'm gonna select that cheats array, add an array element, as you see this is zero. So for this to be zero, 
So let's select cheat codes again. Array index zero is up, down, left, right. So in cheats array here, index zero is whatever up, down, left, right is gonna execute. So again, I hope that makes sense. So the first array element in the cheat codes is gonna fire off the first array element in the cheats. Really hope you understand that. I think it should be quite easy to understand and it's just the best, most efficient way of doing this. So up, down, left, right, I want to execute max health, for example. So to do that, in here, I'm gonna write that actual event. So I'm gonna write CC for cheat code, then max health. You don't need to do that if you don't want, you can name this whatever you like, for example, just max health or health up, or obviously anything you want. You don't need to do CC max health like this. I'm just doing that because that makes the most sense for me and I think that's gonna really help me to keep my project organized. I'm gonna add another array element, this one again being one. So this one is one, two, three, four. That's gonna execute this one. So I'm gonna have CC flying. That makes sense for me. And then what we're gonna do now is come out of this getter copy here and we're going to set timer by function name. So the function name is what's gonna be in this array element here. That is gonna go into the execute cheat. Object is going to be get a reference to self like so, function name again being that, and the time we're gonna to set to 0.1, leaving everything else the same. Compile and save that, and that is how we're gonna execute the cheat. Essentially, it's gonna get the cheat code we want to execute, and then call that function with that exact same name that we have in here. So like I say, it's the exact same name, so we want to make sure that when we name these, we give them the same name. So let's create those events now. So for example, I want to have CC max health, so I'm gonna add a function here, make sure it is a function, so plus function, naming this one CC max health, or again, the exact same name you gave it in your array. And out of this, what I'm gonna do is simply just set health to be 100, and then print a string just so I know that it has worked. And this print string is just gonna say max health. You can do absolutely whatever you like inside of these functions, but these are the cheat codes that you're going to execute. We compile, save, and I'll do another one just to show you both of them working. Plus function, CC flying, as that's why I named it. And this is going to, again, set the movement mode to fly. So set movement mode out of the character movement to be flying. And again, I'm just gonna print a string as well. So print string, naming this one flying. And that is the code done. Compile, save, and I'll give you a quick rundown of this again. So essentially, when the player presses one of these inputs, it's gonna input that character into our cheat code. So it's gonna add that to the end of the current code, setting it there, and then it's also gonna check to see if the current code the player has inputted is a valid code in the system. If it's not, it's gonna wait a second to see if we then retry, and if we don't retry, it's gonna reset it. But if it is a valid code, it's gonna, gonna reset it and execute that code. When it executes that code, or that cheat code, it's gonna get the correct cheat code which we have in this array here, depending on the index of the other array. So again, for me, this is max health or flying, and then it's gonna execute that function here, which is again, gonna be these functions we've just made. So we can minimize this and hit play to test it out. So if I press up, down, left, right, and you see max health has just been called there. Or if I go one, two, three, four, flying has just been called there, like so. Or if I press up, down, left, and don't do anything, it's not been fired off, but if I press right, it still doesn't get fired off because we didn't do it quick enough. But if I go up, down, left, right, it did fire off because I did do it quick enough. So that is the code that we've done today. It's very simple and this works perfectly. So I think that'll be it for this video as we've done everything we want to do. We've set up so we have our own cheat codes within the game, which we can fire off, for example, up, down, left, right, or one, two, three, four. And again, you can add as many different ones on here. It's incredibly easy to add your own to and very easy to customize. So thanks so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed and I hope you found it helpful. And if you did, make sure to like and subscribe down below. So thanks so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.